Well, it's been a great year for APS. We've accomplished a lot, so let me quickly review some of the highlights of this past year. During the last year, council and an array of boards, offices, forums, and committees have collaborated to implement the strategic plan for APS and set our priorities. Several key issues were addressed, and here are a few of the highlights. In early 2014, we launched the Phytobiomes Initiative and at last year's meeting, we gave it some of the spotlight. Since then, Council and the Public Policy Board have focused on building awareness around the phytobiome and developed the first ever phytobiomes meeting, which brought together experts from diverse fields related to phytobiomes. Sessions range from lessons that can be learned from other microbiome efforts to designing a path forward for a phytobiomes systems approach. Phytobiomes 2015, Designing a New Paradigm for Crop Improvement, was held in Washington, D.C. from June 29th to July 2nd and had more than 200 attendees. The initiative also launched the uh, Phytobiomes Roadmap. We're creating a path for generating a comprehensive systems-level understanding of all of the components of agronomically important plant biomes. It's important to receive feedback from all of you, so I encourage you to submit your ideas for the roadmap at phytobiomes.org roadmap or visit the PPB booth in the exhibit hall to participate. To complement our efforts for the past year, APS supported Elizabeth Stahlberg our Public Policy Fellow at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. Another focus this year was an effort to increase our international engagement. APS aims to be inclusive of individuals who have a need for plant pathology resources but may not have the funding to participate in APS as a regular member. After discussing ways to foster a more inclusive society, a vote was put forth and approved by you, the APS membership, to discontinue the current group membership program and instead provide these individuals with a new membership option and added benefits at a reduced price. We're in the process of transitioning current group members to this exciting new program. For our members from Brazil who are here this week, we also recently established a memorandum of understanding with the Brazilian Society for Plant Pathology and a new working group will be formed to help guide our cooperative efforts. In addition to this new agreement, we continue to have successful engagements with the British Society of Plant Pathology, the Japanese Phytopathological Society, the French Society for Phytopathology, and the Italian Phytopathological Society. APS truly is international with over 1,500 members living outside the United States whose interests we value. We're also excited to help facilitate an international exchange of plant pathology science in 2018 when APS hosts the International Congress of Plant Pathology in Boston from July 29th to August 3rd. This is a meeting you don't want to miss. This is really going to be a fun meeting. It's only three years away, so begin your planning early to ensure your participation in a great meeting and a fantastic city. Last year, we announced we would be dedicating significant focus to our journals. This year, we made great progress in transitioning the journals to the new online publishing landscape. APS launched the journals in XML first in April of this year. Readers will find added ease of use and better readability, but the new platform also included Altmetrics, which provides an article level metric showing how many times it's been downloaded, tweeted, or shared on social media. You can stop by the APS Press bookstore for more information. Also, a new task force was launched to dive even further into the future of APS journals where we as a society should be heading to continue to produce relevant and widely held publications. Recommendations are expected later this year from our task force. 
APS aims to engage in all facets of our discipline, and this year the Office of Private Sector Relations hosted its first ever private sector and government institutions tour in July at Research Triangle Park in North Carolina to encourage students and postdocs to learn more about careers outside of academia. 24 participants visited Syngenta, Bayer, Dow, USDA APHIS, and Monsanto. They also worked with APS Foundation to establish and provide the new experiential awards you may have heard about. One for an individual and one for a department or a group. OPSR members will be available throughout the meeting to talk about their incentives and other career opportunities. To help grow our next generation of plant pathologists, we approached a new website with tools for early career members. Several early career focused committee members helped launch CADRE, Career Advancement and Development Resources and Education. The CADRE team wrote dozens of articles, conducted several interviews, some of you may have been interviewed, and gathered existing APS career focused content to develop a hub of information. This member-only website, which requires a login, provides resources specific to those in plant pathology written by fellow plant pathologists. You can't find these unique pieces on Google. It's only unique to Cadre. The website also has a forum for any career questions you have or advice you may need. Feel free to sign up to mentor or be member mentored by members with valuable knowledge and experience. In addition to early career efforts, we focus on developing undergraduates through the Frank L. Howard Undergraduate Fellowship, which this year received a record 29 applicants. The Office of Education will help refine goals for new programming to encourage even more enthusiastic individuals. In fact, this year, we have several high school students attending our meeting this year, and I think are in the audience here this morning. We also ask APS leaders to strategize and collaborate on ideas for engaging the next generation of plant pathologists at this year's Strategic Exchange Forum, which was held on Friday, a couple of days ago. A wealth of ideas were put forward, and several of our boards, offices, and committees will be putting action plans in place to address the next steps. APS wants to provide you the best membership value possible. We love to hear your ideas for enhancing your membership, and we've added a lot of exciting new tools and resources this year to do just that. The APS Image Database is now live and has nearly 3,000 images from eight books in a compendium of plant disease series covering diseases, pests, and disorders. You can join the subscribers currently taking advantage of this diverse collection by visiting the APS Press Bookstore and subscribe to a special image database promotion. Rounding out our added enhancements is Auto Renew. This program has been up and running for a full year now. This new enhancement makes it easier than ever to be an APS member. While this automatic payment works exactly the same way as your current one-time annual payment, you save time and never miss another benefit without ever having to log in and pay. I love being a perennial member. You can sign up at the membership kiosk near registration if you haven't already. So it's clear that APS has had a great year this year. Our success is generated from active engagement of you, our membership. APS truly is a member-driven society, and we're proud of you who commit your time and energy to keep APS strong and relevant. Of course, this wouldn't be possible without our dedicated headquarters staff who work tirelessly behind the scenes to make this meeting possible. The new tools, products, services, and enhancements and events I mentioned are a direct result of ideas provided directly from our membership. We encourage you to continue to send us your ideas online. We truly do value your input.